We are going to discuss about the human and colorful world. So human and colorful world is nothing but what is the human eye speciality? The eye is a very important organ in our body. So we can see each and every object in the world so by using of a human eye. So with human eye only we can see the colorful world. Okay, so in our daily life we can see that each and every person has their own eyes performance to observe the other eyes. So, how it is the organs are important, the eye is also behaving like a one kind of the lens. So, in our daily life we can see this kind of the activities and everything by using of a most probably all people are there using a spectacles also. So, in our daily life we see that. So different different type of uh, communication systems and as well as the different type of uh, spectacles we are using by using of the eye only, eye is the important organ, all people they know that. So the blind people once you observe that how the blind people cannot identify any objects. So that is a very difficult task to identify. So we can easy to identify by using of a right. So what is the eye performance? What is the use of the eye performance by seeing of a other objects? For example, small kids are ready to present their objects and everything. For example, their lovable persons are coming long distance. They can easy to recognize. Some aged people they are using the this kind of the area and they are using the, the thick uh, thick spectacles also. They cannot see the distance objects. So why the different different people has a different type of the eye vision is there. If any reason is there to identify the vision is a different means. Now in this topic we will discuss the total about the eye. Human eye, eye and colorful world. So first one is a least distinct vision. Okay. So least distinct vision. What is the meaning of the least distinct vision so how much of distance we can able to see perfectly okay for example in that area the before or after or otherwise before that we cannot see that objects clearly the least the least distinct vision means least distance from the our human eye out to which area you can able to see the object perfectly by using of this least distinct vision we can identify now i'm going to exam i'm going to say that example about the different for this activity you can see the different different type of age group people are there so for example the small kids are there okay so small kids means below 10 years age people are there okay so below 10 years age people they can able to see that long distance objects also do you know that their lovable people are coming long distance they can able to identify okay and for example adults okay so adult so adult means for example young people we feel that is a young people and the three category of people are there the below 10 years people and above few 10 years means we feel as a somewhat adult people right so young people so then next one above 60 years okay so these are the different different type of categories are there. I am going to categorize that below 10 years and so about 60 years then middle people the remaining. Okay. According to that eye performance is different. But an and average in the survey they identified that different different people how much of least distance value of a human eye they identified. They identified within one activity. What does that mean? Below 10 years age people, the numerals they given, the survey people they given that the below 10 years people they can able to see that the distance is 7 to 8 centimeters. Okay, what is that? So it is a 7 to 8 centimeters, up to 7 to 8 centimeters to the eye, they, they can able to see that. You know that for example, you can bring any book. Once you observe that this is my palm is a book, you can feel that. You just keep this is a palm is somewhere, okay, you able to see that your palm perfectly, right? So then you can you see like this, okay, right, I am going to be able to see that near, near and if I keep like this, then I cannot see it in my palm clearly. So because of the reason, you know, there is a least distinct value we deferred, okay? That's why, what is that? Up to 7 to 8 centimeters, the below 10 years people can able to see that. So, and I will say that, why? I will say 
okay so then after that the evo people evo tinders are eng people how much of distance they can able to see that so that is a 25 cm so up to 25 cm from the eye they can able to see that perfectly that is a adult people and what about the 60 years age people okay so what is that 1 or 2 meters so what is that 2 meters here the category change see that here the up to centimeters only but here the category change to the meters what is that 1 or 2 meters up to that distance only you can ask the any aged people you go and show something they can keep like this they will keep some distance and they can able to see that then only so what is that 1 to 2 meters is above 60 years why we categorize this kind of the things means our muscles are for example below 10 years people you can see that you observe that their muscles are very flexible because the time below 10 years people is like a chubby okay cheeks and this kind of the total muscles are very flexible so some people they may just give a pinch of the particular people also they can feel that is a good means it looks very nice and uh, what does it means that is the muscles are very flexible they can sustain up to 7 to 8 cm at least distinct vision values also but the adult people are not like that as compared to the uh, young sorry below 10 years people adult people are somewhat muscles are stronger and then above 60 years people are they are their muscles are not sustained it is not flexible so totally 100% is not flexible means then we can feel that their eye vision is a 1 to 2 meters or 1 or 2 meters right so these are the different different type of categories what we have to see the least distinct vision now we discuss about the one kind of the activity that activity can identify the how much of distance or how much of the object size for example i am going to discuss in detail for example you can bring a so you go to the any cloth center and you can bring a roller so so one roller is there for example is a 30 cm roller is there okay you can bring the 30 cm roller and next one is a you can bring the so 40 cm roller so height so 40 cm roller and 50 cm roller like this so different different size of rollers you can bring it okay so listen you can see that you, you can bring first roller and you can keep near to your eye and you can keep in front of your eye you can able to see that without changing of your eye so without moving of your eye lid so then you can able to see the two ends at a time is it possible okay for example you can bring that you just keep that your eye is like this here okay so you are able to see the so sticks uh, roller is a two ends so somewhere is a long distance now you just better to just keep near to that for example so this is my palm is looks like a is a roller once you keep it some long distance i can able to see the two ends okay without changing of my so i directions then so slowly i can move front then some okay right not a problem but some distance we cannot see that only the part of the particular object only we can see that at a time two ends we cannot see that without changing of my direction of my eye so what does that means for example you can take that this is a small object so remove this object and keep it bigger one somewhat 40 cm you can keep in front of your eye so right so some part only so then you can see that this is a 50 means is a bigger one more bigger one you can see only one side or one only you can see that okay another end you should not you are not getting to see at a time because of the reason our eye is having the cone shape of vision our eye is having the cone shape of vision so cones and rods are there once you see that our eye vision will looks like this okay so our eye vision will be looks like this the cone shape of the vision will present if inside of the cone only we can able to see the object clearly for example you see that in this situation for example this from 30 cm also we cannot see the two at a time ends so what does that means practically they identify the what is the angle of the vision the angle of vision will be there the angle of vision is 60 degrees in 
degrees okay so what is that up to 60 degree is so we can the, our eye is able to see without changing of the direction the eye can see with two ends at a time the more than the 60 so it is not possible to see the object two ends at a time so they given practical that is a angle of vision we call as a angle of vision of a human eye according to the age wise it may differ small difference will be there but most probably there is a below 60 is a what is that there is a uh, angle of vision right the structure of human eye so very important in this topic the structure of human eye is a uh, it behave like a uh, lens right the how the refraction will take place in our eyes also it is a visible thing it, will, it can be identified the each and every objects by using of a human eye only our brain recognized with a human eye only right so in that is the first uh, sense organs it is the first one sense organ in this this is a total this is a structure of a human eye in the structure of human eye i am going to say that these are the once you see that is the main important is a retina Okay, so in the retina, what it will be there means it is a all are like a nerves type of arrangement will be ready to present, right? And here is the optic nerves are there, it is ready to travel to the it is ready to connect to a brain. And here, once you observe that the ciliary muscles are there, where we are going to see that is a this is the lens, the pupilla has to present, this is our lens, okay. That lens above of the lens, this is ciliary muscles are there, and here the iris is also ready to present here. And next one is a in between the eye and the lenses and pupil and as well as the cornea. So we have one kind of the liquid will be ready to present that is called as aqueous humor. So when we are going to cry or when we are going to do something is a disturbance to our eye then definitely it will give a so water droplets is nothing but there is a not a water there is a aqueous humor there is a liquid right and cornea is there. This is a why in our physics we are going to discuss the main important thing is a pupil. Okay, main important thing is a pupil. The pupil means what is that? It is a lens type of arrangement. How it looks like? I am going to draw here. Here, once you see that, so this is a look like a biconvex lens. It looks like a biconvex lens. And here the ciliary muscles are there. So these ciliary muscles, what they will use means see. For example, I want to see the uh, nearby objects or I want to see the small objects. So how we will see that? I can extend my eyes. Yes or no? If I am going to extend my eyes, then only I can see like this. I can extend my eyes. For example, so more brightness is there. For example, you want to see the more brightness or light. So directly you want to see means directly you will, your eyes are right to contrast. Contrast means it comes closer. So in this total is a expanding or contraction by using of the ciliary muscles only it can be useful. This kind of the muscles can adjust the zooming like a so accommodation eye we call as a accommodation of the eye. These ciliary muscles are right to just using as a expansion or contraction so to the particular pupil that is a special category of the ciliary muscles. Okay right so if if the rays, any uh, ray is coming from infinity, if it is right to fall on a pupil, directly the pupil is a one kind of the receiving nature, it can be right to receive the light. For example, the light is right to come and it is right to refract. What it will be saying as a, this is look like a biconvex lens. Biconvex lens is nothing but it should be so ready to enter into the inside. Then when it will right to reach to the retina. Okay. So then only the brain, brain will recognize the color and shape of the particular object. We want to see any brightness or shape of the object. The light has to enter inside of the retina and it is right to fall on a, on a particular retina. So inside of the pupil and it will make as an image on retina. This place is a image position. In this position only the image has to capture. Listen. One, this is a lens. You feel that this is a lens and this is an image um, position. Then what we feel that this is a meeting point. I said it. I said it is a meeting point. Meeting point. What I said that is called as a after refraction. The rays will meet. That point is a focal point and that length is a focal length. Yes or no? In other 
lens topic we already know that is a refraction of light what does it mean this is a focal length okay so here this is a image position is a fixed every time image position is not changing image position is 100% uh, what does it means in the on retina only that's why image position is a fixed one what is the value how much what is the distance between a lens to particular retina means that value is same f is equals to focal length is also f is also is there 2.5 cm what it will be so actually the least distant division of a human eye is a what is that object distance least distant division of a human eye is a 25 cm so here that is a vru sorry vrf so both are image position or image distance or focal length is a 2.5 cm by using of these values only we can find out the maximum and minimum focal lengths of the human eye okay maximum and minimum focal lengths are there in that maximum and minimum focal lengths we need to calculate the value so f is equals to i want to calculate the maximum focal length okay so i want to calculate the maximum focal length what it will be by using of the human eye so here u value object distance we don't know what is the value that's for infinity or minus infinity or plus infinity what it may be there is a infinity means where the object position is we don't know that's why so in front of i the u value is a infinity and as well as what i said that v value i already know that that value is a fixed one it should be is a 2.5 cm here the sign convention it will give as a positive only in the lens topic we need a biconvex lens especially in that this is a u value is a negative and v value should be positive and now i'm going to use a formula 1 by f is equals to 1 by v minus 1 by u so here this is a lens formula what we are using in this formula i'm going to substitute that 1 by f is equals to here what it will be 1 by v means what is that 2.5 cm minus of 1 by u means there is a minus infinity so something by infinity is nothing but 0 1 by f is equals to 1 by 2.5 and f is equals to 2.5 cm so this is a value of the what i said just now the f value is if image distance that's my that's why the maximum focal length this is called as a maximum focal length okay f maximum is equals to 2.5 cm now we need to calculate the minimum focal length. we need to calculate by using of a value what does that means here the minimum value i'm going to use that there is a u value object distance is a minus 25 cm see here there is a what is a 25 cm the least distinct vision of a human eye okay least distinct vision of a human eye so that's why minus 25 cm i'm using and here there is a v value is a 2.5 cm so you already know that what is the value it is a fixed position the image distance should be fixed now i want to calculate the f value f minimum now in this situation what is the formula lens formula 1 by f is equals to 1 by v minus 1 by u then i'm going to substitute all the values 1 by f is equals to 1 by v means what is that it should be so 1 by v means 2.5 minus of 1 by u means minus 25 so here i'm going to change as a 1 by f is equals to 1 by v means 2.5 so plus minus into minus plus so 1 by so 25 now the 1 by 2.5 i want to change it as a value 1 by f is equals to then i want to write the 10 by 25 correct so how it will comes means just i am going to say that 1 by 25 by 10 i am going to write so plus 1 by 25 in this situation the 10 is a reciprocal the reciprocal of the so 1 by 25 divided by 10 means it will go up so then 1 by f is equals to 10 divided by 25 plus 1 by 25 so in this situation here the bases are equal okay that so this is a uh, down values are equal 1 by f is equals to what is that 10 plus 1 by 25 now i'm going to write here 
so 1 by f is equal to what it will be so 11 so 11 by 25 then both side I am going to take as a reciprocal value f is equal to so 25 by 11 so here the 11 uh, 25 by 11 means in 11 table what it will be so 11 ones are and 11 twos are okay 22 okay so here the more three values are there so three means point okay so again point means 25 again so what is the 25 again 11 twos are so 22 again 3 like this okay so approximately 2.27 centimeters f is equal to what is the value 2.27 centimeters of the is the minimum value that is the f minimum value is a 2.27 centimeters so what is myopia myopia is nothing but it is a one of the defect so what kind of actually in our daily life we have the different different kind of people have the so different type of eye visions are there so what kind of the eye visions means there's the first one is a myopia and second one is a hypermetrophia and third one is a presbyopia these are the different type of the so defects eye defects are there so that is very important this is the first one is a myopia so myopia is nothing but what is a myopia in that so simple logic some people they cannot see the long distance objects they can able to see the nearby objects only they cannot see the long distance objects so that's why what we said that that is called as a myopia the people those the people are not seeing the long distance objects they cannot see the long distance so long distance objects is said to be is called as a myopia and this is another name is also there that is a near sightedness what is that? Nearsightedness. So, in that nearsightedness, then now I am going to say that the diagram, the ray diagram looks like this. For example, this is the eye vision, this is the lens inside of the eye. Okay. Then, the, from long distance, the rays are coming. The, from long distance, the rays are coming and are ready to refract from our eye. So, what I said that this is a retina. Okay. So, we already know that this is a retina. So, the retina has to receive the uh, signals or light, then it will transfer to the brain. That is another issue, right? Now, here what I am going to say that actually, so after refraction, all rays will meet on retina. But it is not possible in front of the retina, the all rays are meeting. So, that's why it is a one of the defect. At the time, so we will see the black type of image. We cannot see the proper image. So, then this is called as a this is called as a myopia defect okay how to overcome this defect so simple logic so what i am going to say that it should be this okay meeting on a in front of the retina but i am going to say that if these rays will meet on a retina then it will be perfect that's why i am going to use a so what is that biconcave lens because it is a divergent okay so divergent i am using that biconcave lens is ready to just a diverse lens now here only it will diverge the lens see that so it will diverge and ready to meet on a retina once you see that if i am going to say that the all rays will meet it at the position of a retina only so that that's why it should be called as a here all rays are meeting on retina it should be okay so if i am going to consider the two rays so three day three rays the three rays are meeting on a retina now it is a diverging so where it is the light it just comes closer then it will diverge and it will mix to form a image on a retina this is a myopia defect myopia defect means again i am going to explain what is that those the people are not seeing the long distance objects they cannot see the long distance object they can see the long, nearby objects that people have in the myopia defect and another name is a nearsightedness so nearsightedness is right to form an image in front of the retina if you overcome this problem if you resolve this problem then i can use in front of the eye i can use a biconcave lens then 
it should be ready to fall the image on a retina this is called as a myopia defect by using of a biconcave lens is useful to okay uh, resolve this problem now hypermetrophia is there hypermetrophia is nothing but what is that so in myopia what we discussed that the long distance object they cannot see the people those who have the myopia defect that people they cannot see the long distance objects but here what it will be there that hypermetrophia means in that hypermetrophia so that people they can able to see the long distance objects but they cannot see the nearby objects they cannot see the nearby objects that is another name is also there that is called as a far sightedness what is that those people are not seeing the nearby objects they can able to see the long distance objects but they cannot see the nearby objects that people having the hypermetrophia defect and as well as another name is also there that is called as a what is that it is a far sightedness then how the diagram has to look like this this is a human eye and here these are the rays are ready to affect so this is coming from infinity right after refraction from our human eye and actually that normal eye is right to affect the meeting point of the refracting rays on retina but it is moving away from the retina and the back of the retina they are meeting is a focal point we right to consider so meeting here then what we come conclude from this kind of the problem means this is called as a hypermetrophia is a far sightedness so that's why it is just moving back of the retina means so in myopia they are right to meet on in front of the retina in a hypermetrophia the rays are right to meet on a, a back of the retina so these are the problems now how to overcome this kind of the problem actually is a moving back of the retina na then i can overcome this kind of the problem by using of a biconvex lens okay so if i use in front of our human eye is a biconvex lens it is a converging lens so converging lens means it won't meet in the back of the retina so directly you should be meet on a so what is that on retina it will adjust the so now it should be meet on a retina then we feel that what is that now it became as a proper shape of the object will appear so now we can overcome the problem by using of a biconvex lens hypermetrophia is overcome with a problem with a lens of the biconvex and myopia will be having the biconcave lens it will overcome so these are the two and another one is also there that is a press biopia so here the dispersion topic and actually is in that the dispersion and scattering is a dispersion is nothing but you know in our daily life we can see that dispersing for example i want to disperse the books i want to disperse the notes so what is the mean by dispersion means it is right to divide okay in a single ray of light according to the physics what we are going to say that if we consider a light if one kind of one color of a light is right to divide into a several colors of light is called as a dispersion of light okay so now the which is a good dispersion of light means there is a which is right to divide the single ray of light to the multiple rays of lights see nothing but it should be a, the one instrument is there that piece is a what is that prism the prism is the best example to divide the single ray of light so once you see that i'm going to draw here this is a prism is there now the prism is a transparent and like a triangular shape okay so triangular glass shape or just three sides are okay so these are the different different sides are right to present this is a triangular shape and here this is a prism when any ray of light is right to fall on a particular so prism what is that means this is called as a incident ray we already know that according to the ray is called as a incident incident ray okay so incident ray is right to fall on a particular so one side of the prism then after that what it will be the rays has to enter inside of the prism it is right to travel and it should be refract the bending of a light okay so bending of a light now you see that the bending of a light and it will try to travel from one place to 
another place when it comes to the another side of the prism again it should, it should be ready to come out of the prism that's why see here also it is right to <coughs> bend that means refraction will takes place again it will come out of the prism once you observe that initially the rays will looks like this kind of direction okay and finally what is the direction of the ray it should be like this once you observe that how much of the bending has to present so this much of bending has to present in our prism this is called as a what is it means angle of vision angle of vision okay so what does it means so this is a sorry angle of deviation okay so deviation so angle of deviation here this is called as a angle of deviation here so what does it means this is called as a incident ray and here also the one ray has to come so that is outside of the prism mean this is called as a emerging ray emerging ray or emergent ray so this is called as a emergent ray this is the angle of incidence is already know that there is a i so then next one it is also this is angle of deviation will be there b sometimes we will show with a symbol d okay small d is angle of deviation is a emerging ray is also having the so angle it should be refraction so we already know that there is a refraction will take place these are the different different kind of the things are there the incident ray angle of deviation and emerging ray okay the deviation formula for the refractive index of a prism in our prism so what is the refractive index value you just find out by using of a derivation formula by formula but for example i want to do that i want to bring a one prism the prism is a points of p q r the three points are there in the prism in this situation once you see that if i am going to consider one incident ray is coming from infinity is ready to fall on a particular so pq surface of the prism then it is right to it is a in position of a prism then it is right to refract it will right to enter inside of a prism and it will right to travel from the m to n okay so here there is a again it is a in position again it is right to refract again it is a refraction will takes place the emerging ray is coming out of the prism so this is the mechanism inside of the mechanism if i am going to draw a uh, angles once you see that is actually so without prism the direction of a incident ray is a so this dotted line will indicate and as well as what is that this kind of the emerging ray looks like to appear as a this dotted line will explain that here once you see that this is a angle of a prism a is going to indicating as a angle of prism now the where the two dotted lines are right to meet that points is a o and here the angle of deviation or so how much of maximum angle should be deviate the light that is called as a what is it angle of deviation is a d right okay so these are the angle values and this is a incident ray angle or incident angle is a i1 from the first one and after refraction the ray is right to enter into a prism that is a r1 is a refraction of a angle so then it comes to the same position of a n position these ray is right to saying as a r2 incident angle now okay so then here it will be that after refraction it will be saying as a i2 okay so these are the angles and everything once you observe that it is a omn is look like a triangle right yes or no so now the triangle formula triangle omn okay so from the triangle omn so in this triangle what does it mean sum of the okay so interior angles is equals to sum of the exterior angle sum of the interior angles means what it will be the sum of the interior angles for example exterior angles i am going to write so here the exterior angle of this o that's why is d is equals to what it will be interior angles means we don't know what is the value that's why what i am going to say that is a you see that is a co linear or co okay angles are there okay that's why is i1 minus r okay so i1 minus r1 is a one angle i am going to consider 
so we don't know that's why this is i1 and it is a minus r1 and plus another angle will be there means this is a i2 minus r2 i2 minus r2 so this is the one equation now i'm going to change as a minus values and plus values will separate it okay i1 plus i2 i1 plus i2 minus of r1 plus r2 so this is the first equation i'm going to consider right so after completion of this one now we'll go for the one more angle is there that is a, a triangle is there there's a pmn okay here the triangle pmn so triangle pmn so in this triangle what i'm going to say that so here what is the interior angle is a a and here once you observe that is the exterior angle is also ready to present here okay now here i'm going to say that sum of the here the formula has to change the sum of the interior angles is equals to 180 degrees we already know that so that is a mathematically is a triangular formula has to present sum of the interior angles is equals to 180 degrees that's why what does that means a so a is a one angle plus once you observe that so we don't know the total value that's why what is that actually the each and every angle should be 90 degrees in the 90 degrees the okay i'm going to just subtract the r1 value that's why this is the value of the particular area so 90 minus r1 is a one angle okay so plus 90 minus r2 is a one more angle of this one so the total is equals to 180 degrees or 180 right now i'm going to separate it that is a plus so 90 plus 90 is a 180 180 Minus of R1 plus R2 is equals to 180. So that 180, 180 is gets cancelled. This minus of R1 plus R2 will goes to outside of A equal. It should be A is equals to R1 plus R2. This is the second equation. Now I'm going to substitute the value in A first equation. Okay, the from first equation from equation 1 okay so what it will be equation again i am going to write the d is equals to what is that i1 plus i2 minus of r1 plus r2 okay in this what is that r1 plus r2 is equals to a that's why what is that d is equals to i1 plus i2 minus a so minus a will go outside of a equal it should be become as a plus d plus a is equals to i1 plus i2 this is a third equation i1 okay so in this equations i am going to just see that now i'll go for the snell's law these are the values okay in this equation now i'll go for the snell's law we already know that snell's law is there the snell's law okay So what is the Snell's law? N one sine I one is equals to N two sine okay R. So uh, otherwise N one sine I is equals to N two sine R. So this is the Snell's law we have. So by using of a Snell's law, first of all I want to know that what it will be. There is a N one N two. So this is a N one. The refractive index one and this is a refractive index two. So we don't know what is the value of a refractive index of a prism, but we know that refractive index of a a. So what is that? Every time the a refractive index value should be one. So that's why in this situation is the m position at m. So m position, what it will be at m? You can write that is the at m. At m position. Now what is the value of n one? N one is equals to one. Okay, but n two we don't know. What does that means? That is n two is equals to n only. I need to take as a n. So what about the i one? Is the i is equals to what is the value? I one. Okay, incident angle is a i one. So then what about the r value? Is a r one. Okay. Now I'm going to substitute these all values in the Snell's law. So n one means one. Is so a one into Sine i1 mean i means i1 is equals to n2 means n. 
ओके साइन आर मीन्स वट इज दट साइन आर वन ओके सो देन साइन आई वन इज इक्वल टू एन साइन आर वन ओके सो दिस इज अन फॉर्मुला वी हैव एंड नाउ विल गो फॉर दी एट पोजिशन एन नाउ द पोजिशन एन वी हैव टू चेंज वट इज द वैल्यू एट एन now at n now once you see that here we can change the values so what kind of the values it will change means once you observe that what's the incident angle here there is a r2 so that's why first of all what you put the n1 value n1 is equal to what is the now here it is n1 so it is not n2 because the air will start the sorry light will start in this position now so that's why n1 is equal to n And n two is equals to one because it, it will enter the second refractive index value is a one because it is entered into a a so that is a n two is equals to one and what about the i one value here that i is equals to r two correct or not so here there is a starting point is a angle is a r two so that's why refraction will take place r is equals to what it will be i two okay. So then, now I will substitute the formula in that Snell's law. N one is equals to n into sine i means there is a r two sine r two is equals to what it will be n two sine r n two sine r is nothing but what is n two one one into sine i one. Now I am going to write n into sine r two is equals to sine i. So this is the fourth equation. Okay, now these are four equations we got it. Then after completion of this one, now what I am going to say that so this is called as a okay. Now we need to consider as a here in that particular area. If I am going to consider the values, I one is equals to I two. Okay, so this is a condition we are right to consider. Then let I one is equals to I two. Here the I one is equals to I two means once you see that what kind of the changes will appear with that. Okay, so we already know that the values are there that should be I one plus I two means I one plus I two is nothing but where the values will be there. Now here A plus D is equals to I one plus I two is there. Okay. So in this situation, what does that mean? D is a angle of deviation. Now I will consider. I will keep it as a capital D. So what does that means? A plus D is equals to what it will be? I one plus I two means there is a two I one. For example, if I consider that both are I one means there is a two I one is a fifth equation now. Okay. So then if I am going to take as a R one is equals to R two. Let R one. Is equals to R two. In this equation, what it will be that A is equals to R one plus R two is there. That's why what is that? A is equals to two R one. Or otherwise, R one is equals to R one is equals to A by two. The two values will go to the bottom. Okay. So otherwise, your wish. You can take as a. If I'm going to take as a values means in this. Equation once you see that R one and I one, so both values we got. I value also I'm going to write here that is a a plus d by two is equals to I one. Actually, this is the fifth equation. Okay, so this is the fifth equation what we have. Now you substitute all the values in that Snell's law what we have. This is a okay. Is the fourth equation is this is now this is the fifth equation actually. And this is a sixth equation, right? Okay. Now I'm going to substitute the values. What we have the a plus d by two, i one value, and r one value is there. Now I'll substitute all the values in the fourth equation from equation four. Then you see that sine i one. Sine i one means what? I one is nothing but it is a plus d by two. Is equals to what is that? N sine r one. N sine r one means what? A by two. That is a a by two. So if I am going to write that, n is equals to 
साइन ए प्लस डी बाई टू बाई साइन ए बाई टू इज अ फार्मूला फॉर द रिफ्रैक्टिव इंडेक्स ऑफ ए प्रिजम ओके सो दिस इज एन इज इक्वल टू साइन ए प्लस डी बाई टू बाई साइन ए बाई टू इज ए रिफ्रैक्ट इंडेक्स ऑफ ए प्रिजम बाई सो ए प्रिजम विथ एन एंगल ए इज इक्वल टू सिक्सटी डिग्री प्रोड्यूस एन एंगल ऑफ मिनिमम डिविएशन ऑफ ए थर्टी डिग्री फाइंड द रिफ्रैक्ट इंडेक्स ऑफ मेटीरियल ऑफ द प्रिजम Now here the one question they given there is a a value is a given as a sixty degrees and here the value maximum deviation is a d is equals to thirty degrees they given so you can calculate the refract index of a prism n value we can calculate it so by using of a formula what we have the formula n is equals to sine a plus d by two by Sin a by two. This is the formula we can need to use. Then here, once you observe that m is equal, so I need to substitute the all values in the above equation. Sin a plus d means what is the a is a sixty and plus d means thirty by two divided by sin a by two means sin. So a means what is that sixty sixty by two. So here this is a formula. Now I'm going to say that n is equal to so sine 60 plus 30 means 90. 90 by 2. And here the sine. So 60 by 2 means there is a 30. So here there is a 30. Now sine 90 by 2 means what is that? It is a sine 90 by 2 means 45. 45 degrees by Sin 30 degrees. Now here, once you observe that sin 35 and sorry, sin 45. The sin 45 degrees is equals to so 1 by root 2. There is a value, right? And the sin 30 degrees is equals to 1 by 2. These are the trigonometric formulas in your mathematics. It will be present. So then I am going to substitute the sin 45 value 1 by root 2. Divided by sine thirty means it is a one by two. If I am going to write in a proper way, one by root two into two by one. Okay, so now it should be is a two by root two. Now there is a root two value is down means I am going to write that root two by root two. Once you see that there is a what is the meaning of that? Two root two is a equal value. Root two into root two means Root two square. Root two square means I will write. So you root two square. Root two square means square and root will get cancelled. So now I will write here. So here this is a two root two divided by. So it is a two value will present. That is a two is gets cancelled. Root two has to present. So this is the what is the value? N value refract to index value is a root two. Okay. So the so we can do one activity. to identify the uh, maximum deviation values are different different type of colors in a water fountain in our area in your home or in your room we can do that so what kind of the activity will be there means for example in your dark room you just consider as a you can take as a one dark room inside of the dark room you can arrange one so source of light the white color of light you can observe that and then you better to uh, stand in front of the any uh, wall and then the back of you you ask your friend to just uh, use the water looks like a fountain yes so the looks like a fountain means the water is right to sprinkling this is coming out of the pipe or something so then you ask to just switch on the light in the back side of the particular pipe or particular water fountain you ask to just Uh, switch on the light. The source of light it should be is a straight light. Otherwise, you can use that as a wooden plank to make a hole and switch on. So then, what on automatically what will happen? The single ray of light is ready to fall on your water droplets and different different type of colors will appear on a screen. So what we conclude from this? Yes, the single ray of light is a white color ray of light is ready to divide into several colors of light. so this is a one kind of the experiment to find out the different different type of colors of light in our daily life the what it will be there means you consider as a one metal tray 
So metal tray is right to present that is a for example this is a metal tray and in that metal tray you arrange 145 degrees of a mirror. Okay. So you arrange 145 degrees of a mirror and then you pour that half of the mirror has to fill with a water. This looks like this. Okay, in this situation, I am going to observe that 45 degrees and this is a mirror that has to present. How many mediums are right to present? Either the water is a, it will, water is behaving like a prism because of the reason. So, if any ray, for example, you ask to enter some kind of the rays inside of the water, what will happen? The rays are ready to fall on a particular water, it should be ready to so reflect it again. So in this area, what we are going, the light has to chosen is the least angle of okay deviation. Means, for example, in our lower class, we already know that if any ray of light is right to fall on a particular area, the angle of incidence is equal to angle of reflection. Means, how much of angle it is right to present, the same angle it should be reflect. So here also, that is means. The rays are right to fall on a mirror in by using of a so uh, water. Then after that, it will come to the some least value, least path it will select to refract or it will try to reflect. So this is the nature of the light. Now we can go for the dispersion of a line. How the dispersion of light has to present? The dispersion of light is nothing but for example, the white color light is there. So, do you know that white color light? So, this is a white color light is there. The white color light consisting of a seven colors in it. Okay. The single ray of light is a white color light. But it is not a single ray of light. The white color contains the seven colors in it. The so what kind of the colors will be there? It means VIPGR. Okay. So, VIPGR. So, the VIPGR is nothing but the each and every letter indicate the one kind of the color it will be. So this is called as a violet and indigo, I means indigo, the B means blue and green means, G means green and Y means yellow and O means orange and R means red. So what is that? Violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange, red. So these are the seven colors are present in a particular white color. So this is also called as a rainbow colors also. Okay, the basic colors are rainbow colors has to present in a big GR. Okay, so these kind of the colors will depend on a, for example, if you go for the light. So how can we say that is a seven colors has to present? Some colors only ready to appear, some colors are not appearing. So because of the reason that depending on the refraction, so depending on the dispersion will be on a particular wavelength and so what does it mean? Angle of deviation. So these are the angle of deviation and wavelength. These wavelengths are right to present in our... So here, if I consider as a... The light is also look like a wave. Once you see that this is a wave, what I want to say that wave, the sound waves, how the sound waves are right to present, same as is that is a light is also considering as a wave. I hear that this is a... Um, the up value and down value means this is a up and downs are there. So here we can call as a this is called as a from this position to this position is a one is a positive half cycle and the remaining is a negative half cycle. Then it is called as a wavelength. Wavelength will show with the symbol lambda. The y is a reverse that should be called as a wavelength lambda. And one more thing. This is a frequency is also right to present or F or N. Sometimes they may show with a F. The frequency of the wave. The frequency wave is right to enter is nothing but number of wave. The intensity of the wave is said to be is called as a frequency. Right? For example, how much of the wave has right to present? So that is by using of a frequency only. Once you observe that in our VGR color. They each and every color have their own wavelength and as well as own frequency. Okay, so own wavelength and frequency has to present. In our area, once you see that, if the prism has to present, in this prism, if any single ray, what is the white color ray, is ready to appear. Once you see that, in this area, now what I said that it should be ready to refract. So this is a violet color to red color. V, I, B, G, Y, O, R. 
Vijaya, these kind of the seven colors are right to present. Here, once you observe that in our situation, the R is nothing but less deviation. Means the red color is a less deviation, more wavelength. Here, once you just consider and keep in your minds, I hear that less deviation, more wavelength. More deviation, less wavelength. Okay, and here that the wavelength is having more. So here the wavelength is more means it need to travel long distances. Okay, but intensity of the red color is not more. There is a less intensity. But here the Vijayar color, the V is a violet color na. Is a more deviation will be there and more intensity has to present. Okay, it is not to travel more distances, but it has more intensity, more power. Okay, so once you observe that, why we need to use the signals colors are red color. There is a danger symbol is also using as a red color. If any reason is there, means yes, we have reason. What kind of the reason it will be there means the red has to travel long distances because their wavelength values are more. Okay. So, but intensity, once you see that, if you comes to the red color, orange, yellow, and here once you observe that orange color is nearby the red color, means it is going to mix. In a Vijaya also, we cannot see that all colors at a time with our eyes. Because of the reason, some colors are going to just mixing with other colors. Okay. So, accompanied with the other colors. Okay. So, not a problem. You can see that there is a yellow color is using in a signals. And as well as there is a green color, okay, up to green color we are using that the signal stop and so think and go, right? So these are the colors we are using. If you know that if a more kind of wavelength values are there, means there is a less intensity and as well as there is a frequency values are less frequency, more wavelength, less frequency. The formula is also there. There is a V is equals to nu into lambda. Here the nu means the frequency or otherwise f into lambda. So do you know that is f so f into lambda. What is the v means? What is the speed of the light? There is this v is equal to speed of the light or sometimes we can call as a c. So speed of the light in a vacuum. This value is also the 3 into 10 to the power of 8 meters per second. The speed of a light in a vacuum is a 3 into 10 to the power of 8 meters per second. Okay, we don't need to go for that. This is C is equal to F into lambda. Or otherwise, this is a constant means that is a F or lambda is proportional to 1 by F. So, what is the meaning of this one? So, wavelength is inversibly proportional to the frequency. If more wavelength, less frequency. More frequency, less, frequency, less wavelength. So that's why it is a reciprocal value, means inversibly proportional. Here also the, the more wavelength has to present, less frequency. Here the more frequency will be ready to present, less wavelength. According to that, wavelength and frequency wise, their positions of a light has to present. Now, some interesting things are there in our daily life. What kind of the things are there means, for example, you know the looks kite. The sky is a, looks like a blue color. So why is the sky is a blue color? If any reason is there, means definitely we have this reason is there. In that scattering of light we can discuss. And but one thing I'm going to ask question raising of arising in our minds. What does that mean? Why the raindrops are right to give a rainbow? After raining only that rainbow has to present. Yes or no? In our rainbows, what it will be ready to present that after raining. In a, some situations only, some areas only will get the rainbow. Is the seven colors will try to appear. The Vibjar colors are right to appear. But every time after raining, it won't appear. Why? It is a ra raining, after raining, it won't appear means because of the reason. Here, that is a, this is a water droplet. Okay? So, this is a water droplet. So when the sun rays are right to fall on a particular water droplet, it is right to enter inside of the drop. Then it will come to the another end of the drop and ready to reflect again. So what it will be there means this is a one kind of the light. It is ready to, it is a prism, it behaves like a prism. 
So in this prism, now once you observe that is a single ray of light, that is the sun rays are right to fall in. Because of the reason, in our environment, after raining, the small water droplets are raised, ready to present, means there is a water vapor. Okay, the water is ready to present, the humidity is also we can call. So here that there is a rays, if ready to enter that water droplets, instead of the water droplets, it looks like a prism and ready to fall and ready to comes to the, so human eye, our eye has to appear here. So in this situation, now once you observe that, what is the angle to make a Vijayar colors? The seven colors has to present means by using of a, so 42, 42 degrees of a angle, okay? So 40 degrees to 42 degrees of a angle, if the sun rays and as well as our human eye has to present. So that is a thing we will get the, for example, 42, so 42 degrees of a angle only will get the rainbow colors. Otherwise, we won't get the rainbow colors because of the reason our eye is also accepting that kind of the, you already know that our eye is accepting that cone, cone shape of colors means cone shape of the colors has to present. Okay, so these are the reason we will get the, there is a different different type of uh, rainbows are right to present and some areas and sometimes only will get the, okay, right the colors, right. So if, if you are going to for, comes to the, for example, it is a cones and rods we can call. So what is a cones and rods means, for example, water droplets are there, this is a cone value, okay, cone shape if I am going to write. So this is a cone shape now. So here that first it will form as a ring, one ring, okay. In our seven color, there is a first one is a red color, right, yes or no? The red color ring has to present. After completion of this one, next color is a Vijayar means or orange. So next color is a what is that next one? So Vijayar means yellow again. Next one like this Vijayar colors. All colors are okay. So G is green. Okay. So next. So blue like this. So next one is a Vijayar indigo. Next one is a violet. See, what is the observation in that particular ring? In each and every circle has a one color. There is a red color, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, right? So, Vijaya colors are there. In this Vijaya colors, first of all, if I am going to see that is in a 42, 45, 42 degrees of angle, then we can see that each and every color in a separate manner. If it is not that each and every color is a vanish. Vanish is nothing but mixing with other colors, right? So then the red color is mixing with the orange and orange color will mix in with the yellow and like this. It will ready to mix and it will make it as a single color. After that, it is not 42, 42 degrees of angle. Then it will all colors will vanish and make it as a single color that is called as a white color. So that is the reason we can use that. There is a vanishing of all colors in a single color is made as a white color. Okay, for example, did you know that some areas, okay, so not only some areas, some uh, people, once you observe that, morning sun rises and sunset, okay, the sun rising and sunset both are having the red color, yes or no? Some, sometimes evening time also we will see that the sky is a yellow color, yellowish. So why it is having the, this kind of the reason means we have one reason is there here. What does it mean? The red color what I said that is a more wavelength. So when when we are going to start the sun rays are right to uh, start. The first rays are right to travel the red color light. Means because of the reason it is right to travel the long distances. The first initially for example these are the color has to present this is our earth. Okay, in that first is a color is a, what is a big ring is a red color. The red color has to travel more distances and it will try to appear. That's why when we are ready to start the morning session, the sun rising, it will appear as a red color. Then sunset is also red color because of the reason. So lastly, the highest color is a red color to appear. So that is the reason, right?
the scattering of light scattering of light is a uh, very easy and very easy uh, observed in our daily life what kind of the scattering of light has to present so simple logic i am going to say that the rebouncing of a light is said to be this is scattering of light the rebouncing of a light is nothing but for example if you observe that in our surface for example this is a surface area is there and here if you observe to any rays of light is going to fall on a surface area for example that is the sun rays are there so here the sun rays are right to fall on this area then what will happen again in this particular area what kind of the particles are right to present or otherwise electrons according to the chemistry wise what we know that the electrons are right to release from the particular surface area this kind of the rebouncing the rays are right to fall on a particular area there is a bouncing of a particles from the surface area rebouncing of a particles is said to be this called as a scattering of light and here there is a rebouncing of a light we can observe by using a millikon experiment a gold leaf experiment in a chemistry purpose we have that is a uh, gold leaf experiment is there where the gamma rays are right to fall on a the gold leaf the gold leaf right to export are going to release the electrons from a particular surface of the gold so that is a simple logic you can go for the best example what we know in our daily life you go for the welding shop you know the welding shop people are going to do welding in a with a one kind of the special instrument right yes or no so what kind of this special instrument like a one white color rod has to ready to touch to the iron particles then the particles are ready to come outside the brightness will try to appear what we means that so we can take if i am going to take as a example is a scattering of light is also i am going to take as a example with a welding for so not the 100% but is a it looks like a so welding is a best example for the uh, rebouncing of a particles or re emission of a light is right to say to be is called as a scattering of light okay so in our daily life what i am going to think about this sky is a blue color why the sky is a blue color if any reason is there so every time the sky is a blue color no the sometimes only morning session only especially the sky is a blue color and then if comes to the noon time means is the afternoon time if i consider to the see that particular sky is a white color and evening time again it comes to the blue color what is the reason in the sky is a blue color means symbol in our sky in our environment what is that nitrogen and oxygen n2 and o2 molecules are there okay what i said that depending on the size of the molecules will depend and it will decide the frequency and uh, wavelength of a light yes or no what is what i said that in a previous example or previous uh, discussion what i said that there is a wavelength and frequency both are reciprocal or both are inversely proportional their frequency and wavelength that their frequency especially can decide the the size of the particles will decide the frequency of a light and what kind of the frequency means that kind of the light has to present for example if i consider the n2 and o2 here in our particles in our uh, water or any environment for example the small particles are right to present in the small particles means if any ray of light is right to present then it should be making as a this size of the molecule will decide how much of colors of light has to refract so then this is a white color light has to refract and it will get a blue color light so this n2 and o2 molecules only will responsible to give a particular blue color light and in our daily life how to make it as a, this kind of the practical making of a uh, scattering of light is in our daily life or in our laboratory purpose is it possible to make it means definitely so we can make it right and do you know the hypo solution in that hypo solution i will explain that you just see so that is a n2 and o2 is a best example for the giving of a blue color light okay now here if i am going to take as a if i consider the one beaker inside of the beaker i want to take as a what it will be the a sulfuric acid h2so4 okay so then as well as the hypo solution hypo solution is nothing but there is a sodium thisulfate 
and sodium thisulfate means I am going to see here uh, sulfuric acid and sodium thisulfate is there means here the initially there is this uh, sodium okay now all particles are right to appear inside of the particular chemical so means if I just observe that the small the size of the particles are right to appear the sulfur particles are right to appear in a less quantity the small quantity means if i just use the light the sun rays are right to fall on a particular this beaker is a transparent beaker it is right to fall on it otherwise is a white color light you can consider then is a small kind of the particles of the sulfur particles can give the blue color light it should be look like a all particles are look like a blue color but after some time if i give as this after 5 minutes or 10 minutes or after 1 hour or 2 hours then after some time what it will happen means then these particles the sulfur particles are going to become as a bigger one okay the chemical reactions will take place and then these particles are make it as a bigger one now this frequency of a particle the size of the molecule or size of the particle is different then the frequency of the light is also different that's why so all white color light is right to refract and it will get the white color light only so then first initially if the particles are small size then it will it given as a blue color then after some time the particles are sizing increasing then after increasing of the size slowly it will change the color and it will give a white color not a blue color right so this is a practical example why the environment has to give a different type of colors in our so nature right